So, welcome to DustyFeet.com, because this is a place where we can safely explore the endless ways of God and the interconnection of His creation, where belief understandings, they may be challenged, divine misunderstandings, they may exist in traditional teachings, they just might falter as we pursue connection, context, and community with God and each other here in an environment of grace and love. So, feel free to journey around the space. Explore. We have many different topics for discussion. Outside the class, Sons of the Father, The Bible Project, Aleph Beta, Follow the Red String, and more. So lend your ear, then lend your voice. Join a conversation, start a conversation, ask questions. Because on this journey, you're probably around folks that just might be pondering the same thing. Community that can build and connect. So come in and join us. And welcome to The Dusty Feed. Good evening. Welcome to the Dusty Feet. It's September 21st, 2023, and we're of another one of our special series, The Sons of the Father. We are continuing our discussions on The Chosen, created by Dallas Jenkins, and we'll be continuing Season 3 with Episode 2, Two by Two. During this series, my dad, John Warren, my brother, Jim Warren, and of course myself, we're going to be having a conversation, and we'll be reflecting on things that have impacted us along the way. So, welcome to The Sons of the Father. In the description below are links to all of the audio, video, and source documents that we use here in the Dusty Feet. We want to make sure that any material we use here is properly credited to those folks who work so hard to bring it to us. Without their efforts, the learning we do here does not happen. And of course on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon if you want to remind And here we are, Sons of the Father. So again, something we always reference up front. Sometimes issues can arise from discussions like these and the assumptions that we have on others listening. But that's always unintentional. If you don't understand or have some questions concerning something that we've discussed, please feel free to either leave a comment and we'll respond as best we can, or you can just send an email to bob at thedustdefeat.com. Sometimes that's just a more private way to ask questions. Okay. Two by two. So I want to start off. The shanty town, right? You're probably not going to like what I have to say here. And it's an upside down thought that will most likely divide the room. And by that, <laughs> maybe that y'all on one side and me on the other. <laughs> but I'm not compelled by the shanty town. Okay. I very much believe that thousands, a few times, were there to hear Jesus speak. But I'm not compelled that those thousands stopped what they did, the lives that they lived and worked, that they all had before that, just to follow Jesus around and to stop living normal lives. I am compelled that they listened, learned, and they went home to live. And hopefully, probably, talk about others around them with what they had learned, right? So, to be fair, that's my personal perspective alone. That said, this is Dallas Jenkins' story. So, 
here we are at the start. The shanty town. Okay. That said, soapbox, I'm off. <laughs> um, what, uh, what's, um, what hit you? Well, Mr. Soapbox, okay. <laughs> Um, I just thought that this, that one of the interesting parts of this one was it's all about people. Mm -hmm. It was about uh, Peter and his wife and the disciples and uh, Atticus and goes on and on and on. And, and I thought that was, that was very interesting to me. I, I didn't notice that in any of the other ones, how people focused it, it it was and when uh, uh gaius and uh, atticus have their little conversation on the rooftop and they're already saying that dominus is going to struggle with this blah 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 and sure enough he does um and atticus again gets his way as as he kind of works through everything and uh um, and Matthew with his parents, it's very, there's a lot of touching things in it with Thomas and, and, uh, his fiance and it, it just, uh, really touched me, uh, Peter and his wife, uh, making plans for the future, mm -hmm. uh, not knowing what, uh, Jesus was going to lay on them. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it, uh, all those individual stories just kind of caught me up in uh, in listening to them, uh, thinking about them. Uh, my brain didn't even go to the well. It did go to the a little bit to the group to the shanty town and all that. But I thought that's possibly what could happen is that they would have followed Jesus. They those that didn't hear him. Uh, uh, there, there, the the story is it scriptural? No, but is it possible? Yes, just like everything else in his stories, it's possible. And uh, he he isn't looking for people to agree with him. He's trying to make something that interests us and draws us into his story and makes us want to know about this Jesus person as, as these people did. I, I thought with um, Matthew's parents, uh, when his father says, we went, we heard him, we heard him and we're hooked, you know, we're, we're, and you're, and you're doing, you're a scribe. I mean, all of this uh, wonderful part that uh, he was able to share with his parents and, and begin the healing process. And, there, there's a there's a lot more about uh, the individuals. If your listeners saw the episode, they know that there uh, is is things that I'll I'll bring up later. But I want to hear what you guys have to say as well. Huh. James, interesting, very similar, Dad. Um, the the name of this one you know two by two and you're thinking of the two you know disciples slash apostles or whoever is going out but you had the pairings that were going on it really was matthew and his dad even though his mom was definitely you know mm -hmm. in that story it's really about him and his dad yeah. um and you've yeah. got <clears throat> but then you've also got matthew and gaius and that dynamic that's going on um, and I love the fact that Gaius, I mean, he really looks at Matthew almost as a son. He wants to watch out for him. He wants to make sure everything's okay, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but then you've got Gaius and Atticus, like you said, up on the roof. Mm -hmm. But then you've got Atticus and Simon the Zealot. And there's a relational dynamic going on there. I think they yeah. both like respect each other, um, but also are sworn enemies, you know, kind of thing that's really interesting that's going on. Um, and then, you know, you've got, um, uh, Eden and Peter, and you've got, um, Thomas, um, and Rama, you know, and so it's just, it, it was just fun to see the different pairings that were going on and how 
the message of Christ is impacting all of them differently. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's changing the way they lived. It's changing the way they believed. You know, Gaius is struggling with this paradigm shift that's going on in his head of, you know, these Jewish dogs, as they've been referred to by the Romans. He's going, wait a minute, this guy's different and I don't get it. Um, so, so I loved the, the, the way they were all, you know, kind of intertwined in that. And he, he kind of shows this two by two thing going on. Um, but yeah, it, it, uh, I also noticed it feels like this season, the quality has also upped, you know, we don't usually comment on, you know, the, the filming aspect of it as much as the, you know, what's, what's being taught there, but yeah. Um, I mean, the sets look better, mm -hmm. the, you know, um, digital backgrounds look better. I mean, it just, it feels, I don't know, more real or whatever. Um, but it's, it's been fun. I, I enjoyed this episode a lot. Yeah, there's the, uh, yeah, the, the two by two is not just about the scene at the end. Right. It's, it's, it, there's pairs all over the place. Mm -hmm. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, Atticus, he doesn't know what to make of it, but he's not ready to dismantle it. Right. Okay. You know, he really has this challenge because he mm. sees something, like you said, um, Jesus is, y y Yeshua's impact is impacting on everyone. Mm -hmm. And he witnesses something that rocks his world. He's not sold on Jesus yet, but his, Im but his influence is, right? There's a, there's a lot going on. People reacting to him, people acting differently because of him. And we see... Uh, Simon and he's he's he he saw that whole thing play out and he is speechless yeah he really and he doesn't get it but it's not like screw it I don't care if I don't get it 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 compels him he wants to know so much so that you wonder how good he is when he ends up on the roof where Simon ends up mm -hmm. that's how good Atticus is but how he handles um you know, the, the Praetor, how he handles, you know, yeah. uh, and him and, and Gaius, again, the, the pairings, he handles that, that oh so well. Um, Matthew's impact with his parents was um, powerful. Yeah. Um, and you're right. It was mostly about dad. And he, he goes and he, he's humble. And everything he does, we, we talk about reconciliation okay trying to get this together this process of healing and i go and, and, and i'm agreeing and then i say interesting because scripture has told us to do it that way for thousands of years we find this new jumbo term we like to use today but god told us if you do it this way it makes a difference and this is what he's doing was told to us back in Torah. You know, this, this is Sinai stuff. And that's what Matthew is living out. Jesus reiterates it, right, with the sermon. And he says, ah. And so he goes to his dad in a, in, in a humble state, so much so that he can't even call him dad. Yeah. And, uh, and that is powerful humility um and his ima his mom right she is priceless at the end of their their <laughs> culmination because matthew finally he's there's so many thoughts running around in his head so he finally gets a handle on it at the end says his his, his piece because there's so much going on yeah. and then mom looks at dad and says are you gonna say it and he's like that gruff dad like oh well, i inferred it she looked straight at him and go you didn't say it. you didn't say it so kudos to him he stands up looks him in the eye and says it yeah and then shakes his hand he gets a hug from his mom how long do you think he'd been that long to get a hug from your mom that's just brutal to me you know that mm -hmm. knowing it that that whole that whole thing played out you know um the uh, two by two stuff. They're just so much to go that it's was huge. Um, that that whole point, because we see that across the other disciples, they're they're, they're learning this right. Right. This 
this horizontal mm -hmm. approach first. Before we go to the Messiah, before we go to the rabbi, we need to right. we need to reconcile ourselves first. Um, we tend to like in our prayer today, we don't want to do that. We don't go to them first. We ask God, can you help this? Can you fix this? Can you go change them? Can you whatever, whatever prayer we'd like to say? And we don't listen to what he says. Go to him first. Then we'll talk. Yeah. And, and Jesus made it clear. We just don't like it. Tough. Mm. Okay, yeah. Dario. What? Well, I, um, I thought Matthew said something very interesting, too, when he brought up the fact that he felt safe behind mm. his big doors, behind yeah. the bars, where people couldn't get to him. Mm -hmm. And all, and it just, it made him feel powerful. And his dad says to him, you wanted to be better than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes, yes. you're right. Mm -hmm. Because he had been uh, demeaned as, as a youth. Mm -hmm. And he got recognized for that. Another thing that um, when uh, Atticus and Simon were up on the roof and they were talking about the gangs. And it reminded me of when I was in Guatemala and I, I worked with that guy uh, whose uh, uh, email address was Psycho. And he oh. had, at 13, he walked from Guatemala to the United States. Wow. And with a 17 year old and a 15 year old, and he spent several years there. He ended up in jail. He killed somebody, blah, blah, blah. But the point was, he said, the only way you can get out of a gang is to become Christian. Hmm. That that'll get you out and they'll keep their eye on you and watch you. Wow. And I thought that's so it just just rang that bell yeah. is that you're yeah. not you're not going to get out of this. And, but maybe that's the thing that gets oh. him out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Meaning a Jesus mm -hmm. follower, that they yeah. really saw that. And uh, I, I, I mm -hmm. like too at the, um, uh, when little James approaches uh, Jesus mm -hmm. and talks yes. to him about uh, his yeah. own uh, disability. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, do you want, do you want to be healed? Well, yeah. Hello. And I remember traveling with Johnny and with Cordell and Mary Jane who weren't healed. We saw people who claimed they were healed. I met a couple of of uh, pastors uh, in in Africa that said that they saw people healed. Not everybody, mm -hmm. but they saw people healed, but they didn't get healed. And yet they still loved God. Right. And that's the bottom line of what Jesus was saying. You're still, you're out there healing other people, but you're okay with it because yeah. God's okay with it. And what's more important? And I, I just, that, that personal thing all the way through right. time after time, person after person. And at the, at the very end, um, the uh they're all they're all over at matthew's house who's he's going to end up giving it to to mary and the ladies to use as mm -hmm. a meeting room or whatever it sounded like that anyway mm -hmm. and they're all praying together and they all brought their fears and they're very open about what are we going to do i never did anything and, mm -hmm. and um one of them philip he said i did some preaching but not like this you know, and be ready for rejection. And uh, they, that whole, um, uh, just, well, I think it was um, Big James that said, this is what we signed up for. Hmm. This is what we talk with Jesus about. This is what he's been modeling to us. And now we have the opportunity to go out and do it ourselves yeah. and the prayer I, i'm really looking forward to the i almost watched the next episode because i had <laughs> forgotten you know just what happened when when they went out mm -hmm. uh so I, I really i really enjoyed that 
that part of it is is um, Dallas is constantly weaving it in to humanity, to people, to making it real for us to identify with, I think. And that's that's what I really enjoyed about this episode. Well, and what was interesting too is, I mean, like you said, they, they, they brought all their fears and we think of the disciples as these strong guys who kind of went out and yeah, we know they, you know, had difficulties and whatnot, but it's kind of like, you know, Hebrews 11, you know, talking about the heroes of the faith and, you know, you're he's listing all these people and you're going, yeah, but they, they screwed up and they messed up and they were afraid and they didn't know what they were doing. And, you know, it's like, exactly. You know, God's using these people who are imperfect to do this. You know, when he, like you say, we're talking to little James and he said, imagine someone like you healing others, you know, someone who needs healing, who's going to be healing. How powerful is that? And then I can't remember who said it. Um, and they said, what, you know, when Jesus was saying, you're going to go out and preach and he says, what are we going to tell them? What are we going to say? And he said, just tell them what I told you, you know, just the things I've been telling you. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, was it Judas? I think it's the newest guy. He said, I've only heard one message. And I think it was Matthew. Or somebody said, <laughs> Is it yeah, but it was the best one. Said, was the, yes, it was the best one. That's all you need, one. you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, just take the that. other ones are good, but. <laughs> yes, yes. This one was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it was just seeing, again, their humanity. Um, the reality of the fact that we are far from perfect. Um, I just watched on TV. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what channel it was on. I can't remember, but it was um, a documentary about Russ Taff. And I don't know if you guys remember Russ Taff, the musician. He was back pretty popular in the mid '80s to late, you know, to mid '90s. I think um, he won like when he first started. He won like three Dove Awards in a row, and then he's also won a couple of Grammys. Um, but he struggled with alcoholism and it just was, it was sharing his story. Yeah. Uh, and it was just so good to see, um, I mean, sad in that that was his struggle and that's, you know, what he had to deal with and how it impacted his family, his ministry, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, somebody who was willing to say, Hey, you know what? I'm not perfect. Um, and God still wants to use me. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I just love that that's. That's who our God is. You know, um, I'm in another series, and I and um, part of the things that I'm addressing are where our minds go initially, mm -hmm. right? Where where our defaults are, and I'm questioning our defaults, meaning like um, when we say obey. We have this negative connotation. We automatically scooch it to the negative side. Mm -hmm. And we come up with resistance to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so we're, and then we wrap up in that and what, where we want to fight it and yada, yada, yada. It goes, we automatically do that. And yet in scripture, every time it mentions that, go read Moses and tell everybody it's watching, go read Moses's interaction. After Sinai, he's talking to the Jews and he says obedience and what it gets you. That's not what your default is, but it is what it have here. That said, the segue is when they're talking about their fears on going out, they automatically go to the negative default. And Jesus hmm. is trying to get them not to go there. So he keeps calming them down. He keeps doing these, you know, the I'm giving you the authority and I'm telling you to keep it this simple, okay? It's just yeah. you guys and keep it simple. He's not telling every follower of Jesus to do this. Right. He's not doing that. And he makes that abundantly clear. What he is saying is for you guys in this, there's more to learn here. Let's work through this. So, Dad, your, your appreciation of their, of their honesty Yes, very much so. Their their willingness around that to to say I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, I'm scared, you know, um, and their and their pairings, right? Matthew and Simon, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, 
yeah. I don't know which was worse. Would be Peter and Matthew <laughs> yeah. or Simon and Matthew. And Peter, in the talk with, with Simon, basically has it the, the Simon to Simon talk, I call it. Right. And they're going, he's going, you're better man than me because <laughs> he knows, he knows you yeah. have a problem. But when they had that initial talk in the, in the room with the guys and you think about that for a second and you go, mm -hmm. maybe at times, how well do they know each other? Yeah. They're, you're, you're right. You keep bringing up their humanity, their, uh, their humanness, right? And you go, these are real people with, with challenges. We have yep. um, Simon and, 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 um, and his wife, they, they, they want to, Sam wants to start a family. Yeah. And their plans get blown out of the water. Things want to, and that's, and the funny thing is, it's not like it's a bad plan. It's not like it's a, it's a thing that you go, ooh, that'd be not a bad idea. So it's a good thing you did it. No, that's, what do you, how hard would that be for you? Right. And I'm still hanging on the, it sounds real good to say, um, you can be in that tri little James, you can be infirmed and be healing, mm -hmm. but to be given the option of, let me just heal you now. And I don't have to be that. What would I really do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Cause I'll be honest. I'm not sure what my answer would be. This is Bob being brutally honest. I'm not sure what my answer will be. It's, mm -hmm. I, I'm not as brave as Johnny. I'm not. I know it. So I don't know what my answer would be. It'd scare the tar out of me. I don't know. There's a lot of things that we have in our lives in these challenges that scare the tar out that of was, me. That was the, the uh, blessing of getting to hang out with those people. Because they didn't yeah. let what they couldn't do get in the way of what they could do. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, Mary Jane spoke all over the world. I was in six different countries with her and she went to others that I never went to. Yeah. And the same with Cordell. And uh, uh, we'd go places and people would come up to me and go, what are you talking on tonight? And I said, he's the speaker, not me. <laughs> and and uh, they just assumed well, that it was. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And of course, after he'd speak, then they wouldn't talk to me. They just wanted to talk to him. <laughs> but that's that's the thing of how God yeah. uses people that are ready to surrender yeah. who we are to him. Yeah. And mm -hmm. like you said, I didn't go to say, hey, God disabled me so I can minister to these people. Yeah. I didn't say that. I just helped Cordell or yeah. helped Mary Jane or, or yeah. whatever. And uh, that yeah. that is that that is, again, what this. Uh, this episode talked about a bunch of human beings. All of a sudden, Jesus drops in their lap. You're going to go out and start talking like I talked. And that just scares them. Yeah. Scared. Jim, you were never scared when I asked you to go to another country and said, hey, I'm not going to speak, but my son will speak at your church. <laughs> You know, it just, that's just, um, it's going to happen. And, and that's what I liked about this episode is that they showed that. They didn't, like you said, I think, Bob, we, we just assumed they were superheroes. They're saints. They're above and beyond it. No, they weren't. They were human beings that were scared and dealt with their egos and dealt with, as we saw, um, a Thomas and Rama interacting. We saw the three ladies interacting. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know what the one has got a problem with, but definitely she's got mm -hmm. an issue that she's gonna probably gonna come out before. It's, right. Anyway, I'm rattling mm -hmm. now, but I I just really like the episode. Yeah, I think I think Jesus even when he was addressing them initially, talking about going out. Not only did they feel ill-equipped or ill-prepared um you know in terms of you know their lives they they weren't formally trained um students and communicators at all um but they felt like you know we don't even know what we're supposed to do and the whole point jesus was making is 
Exactly. Because I need you to rely on the father. Mm -hmm. And if you're not going to do it on your own, I'm going to make you do it by throwing you out there, you know, like the bird, you know, kicking the bird out of the nest. Okay. We're going to have to start flapping here. Otherwise we're going to hit the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to have to start doing something. Trust God to Mm -hmm. step in um, and make real exactly what Jesus has been saying. And easy for me to critique them hard for me to go, Oh yeah. (laughs) You know, I I'm in the same boat. You know, when I feel completely ill-equipped as I got, I don't want to go do that. You know, you were talking about going to Africa, going to speak in Africa. Fine. But if I had to go to Africa on my own and deal with all of the travel and you know, the, the customs and all that stuff, dad, that you took care of when we went, I would have been paralyzed. I was like, I have no idea how to handle that. And, and, uh, but you took care of all that. So I didn't have to worry about it. Um, and, you know, and you forged a path there because you went on trips, you know, when you first started going on these outreaches, um, you didn't know, and you just probably made a lot of mistakes along the way. Uh, and you know, eventually learned it's kind of like me with, with teaching too, you know, made a heck of a lot of mistakes along the way. Um, but we learned through that process to trust God. And that's what Jesus wanted the disciples Mm -hmm. to experience. Yeah. They, um, in their position and material, they're the first of their, of the first, right? Mm -hmm. The first of their kind, right? Um, we're not, they're, they're not the first teachers. They're not the first ones to do this. They are the first with the new material, right? The, the, the additional things that Jesus emphasizes in the Sermon on the Mount will make that probably the most bold example. The other parables are helpful segues to the story. Every single one of them supports Matthew 5 through chapters 5 through 7. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then how they they live it out. They're pioneers in that regard. But pioneers, it's scary being a pioneer. We've done our U.S. history. We know mm-hmm. it's, uh, yeah, full of villains and heroes and and well, whatever it may be. Two by two. This was a good episode. You're right. Yeah. It wasn't just yeah. the 12 sent off, the obvious, right? That the subplot underneath is the interactions, the relationships. Mm-hmm. And I'll believe this is important because it's still two by two. I think we forget we want to do these grand scale things. And we forget that really, bottom line, looked him in the eye like Matthew's dad did and said, mm-hmm. you know, two by two. Yeah. So, good episode. We'll wrap on to our next episode, season three, episode three. This will take mm-hmm. us places. All this right. will be fun. Thanks for being with us, guys. As always, we love these things. And uh, yep. have one. So our point to ponder, not changing, especially in light of if you've watched this episode, is very simple. Again, these gentlemen were chosen. They were special for who they were and what they were chosen for. Were they the perfect ones for us? We didn't choose them. He did. And their lives have reflected that, and history has taught us so much more. Chosen, having been selected as the best. So thanks for with us tonight on another episode of Sons of the Father on the Dusty Feet. <laughs>